Before that machine was ever available, they'd have you go home and um, wrap um, some toilet paper, just like one thin piece of toilet paper around your penis while you're sleeping, make it you know, nice and snug while it's flaccid, and then if you should have an erection. Do we know of any natural remedies? You know, there are lots of guys who would rather not go to a doctor per se. Uh, have you heard of anything where the, I mean, I've heard something called I've heard of something called <laughs> I've heard I've heard all kinds of things. And uh, today on the channel we talk about a sensitive topic that affects millions of men worldwide. And many men encounter it differently, some during sexual intercourse or masturbation, others after surgery or illness. Yet again, some guys have been caught off guard and been unable to perform because they were anxious, depressed or stressed. While this occurrence is not a life-threatening condition, it can really affect a man's quality of life, self-esteem, and relationships. My favorite advanced family nurse practitioner, Lily Harmon, joins us on the channel today to highlight it all and also discuss how you can get stronger erections. All that and more coming up. Welcome back. This video seeks to answer three questions. Number one, what causes weak or simply non-existent erections? Number two, how to manage or cope in your relationship if you have weak erections? And number three, how you can make your erections stronger. Okay, let's jump right in. Lily, really good to see you. Thanks for having me. Great, great, great. So, I mean, how can men have stronger erections? And, and before you answer that, because that's really why a lot of people are here, I think it's important that we understand that um, first we need to talk about the condition that makes people have weak erections or... No erections. Whatsoever. No erections whatsoever. Erectile dysfunction, that's what it's called, correct? Yes, that is correct. So erectile dysfunction is the inability to attain or maintain an erection strong enough for sexual intercourse or to complete sexual intercourse. Um, that's the basic definition. And what are some of the things that cause erectile dysfunction, would you say? There are multiple things that can cause erectile dysfunction. Um, physical factors, um, medications that you're taking. Um, for some people, genetics even. Genetics? Yep. Hmm. It's, uh, there's, a, a, there's a certain amount of science supports that. Um, genetics, your lifestyle, um, things like that hmm. can um, affect. What about psychological factors? Like that anxiety, depression? That is probably depression. one of the biggest ones out there. Strangely enough, um, many people don't realize it, but the, the brain sexual connection is a pretty strong one. So um, yes, psychological issues are major when it comes to erectile dysfunction. I've heard of um, pelvic injuries. Yes, so anyone who has ever had any kind of um, pelvic injury or um, pelvic radiation in that pelvic region, anything at all that has ever happened um, down there to make things other than normal um, can also cause that. Okay, all right. Um, let's talk a little bit about maybe lifestyle factors because I know definitely the kind of life that you've lived or how you choose to maybe eat, work out, also plays a big role, would you say? It does. Um, if, if you're a healthy eater, if you exercise, if you do all the things that your healthcare person tells you to do for the most part, um, the belief is that it will affect you positively. And as long as it does, you should be just fine. Lifestyle factors, um, exercise, or your lack food, of it. <laughs> or, or lack of it. Sleep. Although, oh, sleep is huge. Um, so are there other notable things that could cause, um, you know, erectile dysfunction that we haven't mentioned so far? So definitely um, healthcare conditions, so high blood pressure, um, high sugar or diabetes, um, peripheral artery disease, um, anything at all that basically causes your arteries to not function as they should um, can contribute to erectile dysfunction. There are a lot of young men who, as soon as they hear the topic erectile dysfunction, they're like, oh, that's not for me. Does age really play a role? Yes, it does. 
Um, but strangely anymore, we tend to see them younger and younger. I'm not sure why. Um, at some point, probably someone will, will investigate that. But my clients that come to me tend to be younger anymore. I'm seeing my late 20s into the 30s men coming mm. up with this concern. So it's a, it's a little concerning. That's interesting. It has been, yes. Right. I guess maybe from then it would go beyond the age into the psychological factors as well. Because like, I know there are a lot of men who might get anxious. Yes. And in that anxiety, it's like, oh, I've been looking for this girl for so long. Finally, she's here. And then like, you can't even get it you up. You get there and Johnny's like, not tonight. Not today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so usually when they come to me, uh, what we do is we'll do some blood work first, of course, to rule out any um, low testosterone issues or anything that we can actually pinpoint specifically um, to rule out any concerns. Once that is done, let's say it comes back and your testosterone level is fine and there's nothing physically going on, then the psychological issues become the next big thing. Like, right. okay, are you overthinking it? What is going on? Things like that. Okay, makes sense. Um, and I know you mentioned this already. You said genetics also play a role. So if things like um, high blood pressure and diabetes run in your family, you want those controlled. Um, just because it runs in your family doesn't mean you're going to get it. There are certain things you can control, including lifestyle, um, to prevent yourself from getting there. Mm. Um, control what you can control. What you can't control is your genetics. But just because it's in your blood doesn't, it's in your genes doesn't mean you have to have it okay that's the lifestyle aspect of it is. So it's not like you're doomed so far as you come from a no. certain line so how would you say erectile dysfunction is diagnosed and are there any tests involved with stuff like that so you go to your doctor and you're like hey i can't get it up the first thing they'll do is ask you a few questions about you, your history, so um, who you are, what illnesses you have, what medications you take. They'll basically get some background on you. Um, once they have that, they're going to most likely do some blood testing to make sure, again, that your testosterone level is not what the issue is. Um, and then if you need to, they'll have you see most likely a urologist if it's um, that serious serious um, and when you go there they'll be checking for physical abnormalities so you know is there is it the way it bends is it is it broken is there a, <laughs> you know is there an issue with the actual anatomical part um, if once that's ruled out if it's not that um, then they go on to again back to the psychological thing so right. they'll check blood anatomical um, abnormalities and then go on to see hey it wasn't either of those things looks like everything should be working so what's going on up here I've heard of something called nocturnal penile tumescence right NPT NPT what so is that? Um, these days it's it's easier to do it because they they send you home with the appliance and you wear it um, at night hence the nocturnal um, you turn it on so it kind of it tells the doctor how many erections you had throughout the night, wow. uh, how strong the erections were. Before that machine was ever available, they'd have you go home and um, wrap um, some toilet paper, just like one thin piece of toilet paper around your penis while you're sleeping, make it you know, nice and snug while it's flaccid. And then if you should have an erection in the night, you wake up and the tissue is split, it's torn. Oh. If you didn't have an erection, then it's still wrapped around and snug. <laughs> they <laughs> they used to do that. Yeah. Ah, okay. Well, I mean, so let's get into the, the crux of the matter. How can men get stronger erections? Are there certain things that they need to do to make sure that, hey, you know, they're always up and ready to go when the need arises? Let's, let's highlight a few of these. Okay. So... Everything has to do with everything. Let's start there. Because we're not, again, separate from other parts of our body. We are a whole human being. And so in order to have that kind of health, you have to have whole body health, essentially. So um, alcohol, yeah, have a drink here and there, not too much. Smoking, illicit drug use. Um, just anything that you know you're doing to your body that can hurt you. Um, so 
like we just said, mm. smoking, drinking, try to stay as healthy as you can, stay hydrated. Exercise. Um, exercise, stay active. Uh, usually when I mention exercise, people want to go and join a gym. That's, <laughs> that's not, just save your money. A walk around your neighborhood once a day is excellent. You don't have to join a gym. What do you think about practicing safe sex? Do you see the correlation here? Ah, uh, yes. Um, untreated sexually transmitted infections can affect your ability to perform not only, you know, the, the pain or discharge or discomfort that comes with all of those things because of the inflammation that does, the disease is causing, um, but just knowing that, you know, you're flea ridden. <laughs> Did you say yeah. flea ridden? Flea ridden scumbag. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just knowing that you have the disease or just practice safe sex. Condoms are cheap and um, they work 99% of the time. Do we know of any natural remedies? You know, there are lots of guys who would rather not go to a doctor per se. Uh, have you heard of anything where the, I mean, I've heard something called red ginseng. I've heard of something called horny goat weed. I've heard, <laughs> I've heard all kinds of things. And uh, is there any efficacy? Again, science doesn't back any of those. Um, we do know, back to the psychological thing, strangely, it's called the placebo effect, where if someone thinks something works for them, it does. Mm. Um, so back to the psychological thing again. So do the natural ginseng and the goat weed and all of those things, do they work? Depends on you, I guess. If you think it does, it probably does. But as far as science, and we, there's no supportive evidence. Have you heard anything about acupuncture? Because in my Ouch. research, I came across something like that. Acupuncture. I've, I've heard that. I have um, <laughs> I've, I've watched it done. It was quite painful to watch just because I'm not a needle person, but um, the Eastern medicine um, supports a lot of that. And again, I don't have evidence or we don't have enough evidence to back it. It appears to work for some and um, if it works for you, go for it. Well, I mean, that's, that's absolutely great. Thank you so much, Lily. But you know, in conclusion, right? Erectile dysfunction can happen to anyone and at any time. If you're currently experiencing this and it's beginning to affect your relationship, let me give you like some really maybe quick tips that you can use, you know, to help the situation. I think communication with your partner is important. That's number one. You know, it's important to communicate openly and honestly about what's going on with you. This can help reduce your anxiety um, and expectations to perform and inadvertently re improve your relationship as well. Because really, if she doesn't know what's going on with you, she can't help you, right? Number two, I think it's important you try new sexual techniques, right? Experimenting with new sexual positions. Kama Sutra, look into it, right? It can help you and your partner find new ways of being intimate. Then again, you can also explore non-sexual ways of being intimate which would be my third point, engaging in non-sexual activities such as cuddling, hugging, kissing, um, can help you feel closer to your partner. Number four, practice stress relieving or stress reducing activities. So if you believe in yoga, meditation, deep breathing, all these can help reduce your stress and anxiety, which can help improve sexual function as well. Number five, focus on other aspects of your relationship. Now, erectile dysfunction doesn't have to prevent intimacy in your relationship, so focus on other aspects such as emotional intimacy and communication. And maybe to wrap it up, I would say go and seek professional support, consider therapy, um, couples therapy can always help you and your partner work through issues related to erectile dysfunction and improve your sexual relationship as well. So, I hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. My name is Jessica. Cheers.